tennis rackets, golf clubs, armor helmets, and car spoilers. Do you know what they all have in common? They are all made of composites, but not just any composites, short fiber composites. From everyday tools to high performance gear, short fiber composites play a crucial role in various applications. In this video, we will teach you what short fiber composites are, and specifically, we will tell you how to make and simulate the damage of these composites in Abacus. So stay with us. Hey Abacus users, how is it going? In this video, we'll be discussing damage in short fiber reinforced composites using Abacus. No need to worry, we'll thoroughly explain the concept of short fiber composites from the ground up. So grab your notebook and pen and let's dive right in. Let's answer the first question. What is short fiber composite? Or you might even hear chopped fiber composite. As you know, composites are made of two main parts, reinforced and matrix. The reinforced uh, part could come in different shapes, particle, flake, and fiber. The fibers in fiber reinforced composites could have two shapes. They could be continuous or discontinuous. You can call the discontinuous fiber reinforced composite the short fiber reinforced composite. Therefore, the short chopped fiber plus the matrix will produce a short fiber reinforced composite. The fibers in this composite could be positioned aligned or randomly in the matrix depending on the use of the composite. Now that you know what the short fiber composite is, let's see some of its advantages to understand why we need them. Impact resistance. The addition of short fibers enhances the impact resistance of composites, making them more capable of withstanding uh, sudden loads or impacts without fracturing or breaking. Wide range of applications. Short fiber composites offer design flexibility due to their ability to be mod molded into complex shapes. They can be easily formed to meet specific geometrics, enable um, intricate and customized design for various applications. Durability. When appropriately designed, manufactured and used within their specified limits. Short fiber composites can exhibit high durability and provide long lasting performance in a wide range of applications. Lower cost. Short fiber composites can offer cost advantages over other advanced composite materials. They are typically more affordable to produce and process, making them a viable uh, option for various industries seeking cost effective solutions without compromising performance. Easy to process. Chopped fiber composites are generally easier to process compared to continuous fiber composites. The shorter length of chopped fiber and their random distribution within the matrix material facilitate better flowability, allowing for easier mold filling and achieving complex part geometries. Fatigue resistance. Short fiber composites exhibit good fatigue resistance, enabling them to withstand cycle loading and prolonged use without a significant degradation in performance. This property is crucial in applications subjected to repeated stress or dynamic loads. Another question is how exactly the short fiber composites are molded in finite element software such as Abacus. There are two approaches here. Macro modeling scale and micro modeling scale. Let's see the micro modeling first. As we said earlier, one of the short fiber composite applications in the sport cars spoilers, as you see here. In the macro modeling scale, we just need to model the whole part of in the part of the module and then define the composite material properties and the composite layers in the property module. As for the micro modeling, consider this spoiler again. This time, we do not model the whole model, just a very small portion of it. In fact, we do a RVE modeling, the smallest volume that could represent the whole volume properties. 
With this method, you can simulate the smallest portion of the model instead of the whole model as you see in this picture. You must model the matrix and fibers separately and then assemble them to create the RVE of your model. Next, we define the material properties of the matrix and fibers. In this package, we will do the macro modeling. Now enough about the introduction, so let's cut to the chase. How can we uh, model the short fiber composite damage in Abacus? To answer this question, first we must know the proper criteria and the theory behind it to evaluate the damage in short fiber composites. Based on a theory from a research article, which is the one we use here, we can use the thermodynamic of uh, irreversible processes using internal uh, variables to model damage mechanics. This model is based on a, a macroscopic approach using internal variables together with a thermodynamic potential expressed in the stress uh, space. In the thermodynamic framework, the evolution of damage is governed by the associated thermodynamic forces. But what are the thermodynamic forces? They are the strain energy release rates. You don't um, need me to tell you uh, what the strain energy is, do you? Since we want to use them to evaluate the damage, we use the damage strain energy release rates obtained by taking the derivative of the damaged uh, material strain energy formula with respect to the associated damage variables. I won't show you these relations because I do not intend to bore you with them or make you confused. I will only show you the important relations and the ones we will use in this modeling. Okay, now that we understand the concept of thermodynamic forces represented by the variable uh, yi here, we can proceed with their application in assessing damage. But the question is how? Here we introduce another variable known as the initial damage threshold, denoted as y0. This one is the thermodynamic force of the model when the damage starts to kick in, or you could say damage threshold. This variable is determined by the experimental test. We will delve into the de details of this process later on, but for now let's focus on the fundamental principle of this the theory. By comparing these two variables, we can determine whether damage has occurred or not. If the yi was greater than the y0, means the model is damaged, and if it wasn't, uh, well, it's not damaged yet. Now let's dive into the details of this damage model. I said that the th thermodynamic forces are the damage strain energy release rates obtained by taking the derivative of the damaged uh, material strain energy formula with respect to the associated damage variables. Therefore, first we need to see what the damaged material strain energy formula is. This is the equation. But if you are familiar with the damaged material strain energy equation, you probably noticed that this isn't a typical damaged material strain energy equation. This one here considers three things that the other equations don't. Anisotropic damage, um, unilateral effect, and a residual effect. The anisotropic damage is for the cases of non-proportional loading and it is re represented by this term of the equation. The unilateral effect or microcrack closure effect could lead to the deactivation of damage and it is quantified by this term. And finally, the residual effect or pen permanent strain is calculated by a new term related to frozen energy which is a function of the damage variable, the stress tensor, and some material constants to be identified and is added to the basic thermodynamic potential. You may know what the anisotropic damage and uh, unilateral effect are, therefore I'm just going to explain what the residual effect is in a very brief version. When loads or tensile stress are applied to a composite structure, cracks and thus damage is induced in the material. On the contrary, during the unloading phase, the microcracks progressively close up to a certain extent. This phenomenon has microscopic justifications related to the nature 
and geometry of the crack so this means they're they're not completely closed and we call it permanent strain or residual effect now let's introduce the parameters of this equation u is the thermodynamic potential energy sigma is the stress tensor and d is the damage tensor the inverse of C hat is the fourth order elastic co compliance tensor of the damaged material. E is Young's modulus of the uh, undamaged material. M tile is a fourth uh, order tensor to take into account the unilateral effect. And A is the symmetric fourth order tensor ta uh, that takes into account the, par uh, the permanent strain in the equation. Now that we have understood the damage material strain energy equation, let's see how the thermodynamic forces are calculated. As I said earlier, we need to take the derivative of the damage material strain energy formula with respect to the associated damage variables. We do that and we will have this equation. Next, we must take into account the possibility of interaction between the principal damage directions. Therefore, a correction must be done to the expression of the thermodynamic forces. A weighted sum of the thermodynamic forces or thermodynamic forces combination must be used. For a 2D case, this relation is used where B is the unknown material constant uh, bounded between 0 and 1 and y bar i is the uh, weight, uh, weight uh, thermodynamic forces associated with di. The thermodynamic forces drive the evolution of the internal variable characterizing the damage up to failure. Those forces must satisfy the uh, Clausius uh, duem in equality due to damage so that the thermodynamic forces equation is thermodynamically allowable as shown here. However, the evolution law satisfying this inequality in is chosen to be of the following form, where Y0 is the initial damage threshold and I is uh, one of the principal directions. The function F is a growing positive function intrinsic to the material which you'll see what it is in the next slide. How the damage the parameters are calculated. This is the relation we have just seen and this is the function f I told you that you'll see in this slide. This function represents this diagram obtained by the experimental tests. Therefore the damage parameters are calculated by this diagram and this function is in two principal directions. This diagram represents the damage parameter in direction 1. The A is the unknown material parameter or as you see it represents the slope of this diagram. The Y0 is the initial damage threshold. The I is one of the principal directions and F is the growing positive function intrinsic to the material. The A and Y0 are obtained by the experimental tests and by calculating the thermodynamic force why I, the damage parameter, will be obtained. Now how exactly the strains are going to be calculated? By taking the derivative of the damage material strain energy formula with respect to the stress tensor, this formula will be obtained, which calculates the total strain. This total strain compri uh, comprises two components, an elastic part, which is determined using a specific relationship, and a permanent part which is obtained through another relationship. Alternatively, the, uh, the permanent um, part can be expressed as shown here, where the first relationship represents the, uh, the permanent strain in direction one, and the second relationship determines the permanent strain in direction two. The values of alpha and beta are parameters uh, that are determined through experimental tests. Now it's time to learn how to apply all these relationships and the damage model in Abacus. To accomplish this, we use the VUSDFLD subroutine. If you want to learn how to write this subroutine line by line, you should watch the full version of this tutorial, which I put the link in the description below. In order to variable the subroutine, we have supplied a detailed PDF or file that contains a comprehensive explanation of the verification process including a comparison of experimental and simulation results. Therefore, in the slides, we will just have an overview. This table shows the different material properties that the authors of the Dono's model article are used to verify the model. As is clear, 
The mechanical properties and damage parameters have different values, therefore several cases are considered. To validate the model, tensile compression and shear loading conditions were used for both a single and multi-element models. Also, the tensile and shear cycle loadings were applied to both single and multi-element models to study the cycle behavior of the model. This diagram shows the single element model tensile test results for two cases of the model. The results of the model having Young's modulus of 7.7 .7 gigapascals are in good agreement with experimental results. This diagram shows Downo's damage model compressive behavior for the single element model. As you see, there are differences between the experimental and simulation results for both cases 7 and 7.7 .7 gigapascals. These differences could be because of the mistakes in the test by the authors because there is no sign of nonlinearity behavior in the compressive loading test. Now let's attend to the workshop too. This workshop is just like the previous one in all matters except for element type, boundary conditions, and some other details which you'll see. This is the mesh model with the shell elements. And this is the model when it is damaged in direction 1. The geometry and material properties are the same, so we skip that part and attend to the boundary conditions. This side of the model is fixed. In the initial step, the other side has this condition. But when the simulation starts, it becomes like this. Now let's get to the software. As we said, the dimensions of the model are the same as before, but this time we use the 3D modeling space and shell shape. Move on to the property module. The material properties are all the same. However, this time we created a shell section and assign it to the model, as you see here. Oh, and there is no need for assigning material orientation. We created an instance of the part in the assembly module as before and move on to the step module. A dynamic explicit step was created for this model. The nonlinear geometry is on and the time period is 0 0.0045 seconds. This time we want to see the results in 50 intervals and don't forget to check the STV field output option. Now the load module. As we said, this side of the model is fixed. And the other side has these boundary conditions in the initial step. After that, the displacement is applied according to what we saw in the slides. And don't forget to create an amplitude for it. The size of the mesh and the mesh control settings are the same as before. The element type, however, is different. It would be S4R. Now the last thing we need to do is to determine the state variables and unknown parameters with the same way we did it as before, which you can see here. Now everything is set. We create a job. Call the subroutine and submit the job. It just only takes a few seconds. Let's see the results. This is the stress distribution of the model. This is when the damage occurs. Let's see the state variables. First, the damage variables. This is the damage variable in direction 1. There are no damages until this time. The damage grows until we have element deletion, which means the model is broken. This is the damage variable in direction 2. 
plastic strands. Permanent strains, and total strains. Well, that's it, people. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you again. Hello everybody and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Damage simulation of short fiber composites with subroutine. This package includes these sections. Lesson 1. What is short fiber composite or SFC? Lesson 2. Short fiber composite modeling. Lesson 3. Damage in short fiber composites or Dano model. Lesson 4. How to apply the damage criterion in Abacus. Workshop 1. Composite plate with a hole with plain stress element. Workshop 2. Composite plate with a hole with shell element. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope it will be useful for you.